Hey there, Python trainer Ruben Lerner here. And today I want to talk to you about two really useful methods, IDX min and IDX max. So how do we use these? Where do we use these in Panda? So I'm going to load up NumPy and friends. I'm going to say num import NumPy as NP, import pandas as PD from pandas import series and data frame. And then I'm going to uh, set the random seed to zero, np random seed zero, so we all get the same numbers. Then I'm going to say s equals a series of np random rand in from zero to 1000, and we want 10 numbers, and the index is going to be a list of a, b, c, d, f, g, h, i, j. Okay, so far so good. And now I want to get, well, here's my series. Let's first look at that. And so what is the smallest number in s? Well, that's pretty easy. I can just say s dot min. And sure enough, I get nine, which is the smallest number there. But let's ask a slightly harder question. What is the index of the smallest number in S? Well, that gets tougher, right? Because nine is the smallest number, but I'm not interested in nine. I'm interested in I. I want to get that index back. So what I could do is I could say something like s.index, but that's just going to give me the index. What if I said like s sort values, right? That's going to give you back a new sorted version dot index. And now I'll get that index. And then I can say like square bracket zero. So I could do that, but yuck, right? That's a little convoluted just to get the index from the minimum value. And so it turns out that there is a special method, idxmin, and I can just say s dot idxmin, and I get back i. Ta-da! Done. And what did this do? As you can imagine, instead of giving me back the minimum value, I get back the index for the minimum value. And now I can do the same thing with the max value. I can say here s.max, and that will give me the maximum value. Or I can say s.idxmax, and that will give me the index for the maximum value. Now again, there are other ways that we could do this, but this is just so incredibly convenient. What if I want both the minimum value and its index, right? So I could do something like, right, s dot sort values head one or head zero, head one, it would be. And so I'll get i and nine, right? So I will get them there. Another way I could do it though, say s dot ag. And ag allows me to run more than one aggregation method on our series. So I can say s dot ag, and then I pass it a list of strings and that can be min, and idx min. And look at this. Now I get the minimum value is nine and the minimum values index is i. Guess what? I can add as many things as I want to that. I can say also max and idx max. And now we have the minimum value and the minimum values index and the maximum value and the maximum values index. Now, because we have here integers and strings, so the D type is going to be object and we did get a series back, but hey, at least we got these things back and it wasn't too hard to do it. What if we have a data frame? What if I say df equals, let's reset numpy again, np uh, uh, random seed zero, and I'm gonna say df equals a data frame of np random, random from zero to a thousand, and we'll say we want six by six. And then I'm gonna say here, index equals list of a, b, c, d, e, f, and we'll say here the columns are list of u, v, w, x, y, z. And now we have our data frame. So far, so good. And now I say df.min. What is this going to do? Well, when we run a series style method on a data frame, the method is run on each and every column, and we get a uh, response for each column. So I'm going to get the min of u, min of v, min of w, and indeed, we get the minimum values from there. Can I do this? with idx min? And the answer is yes, df of idx min. Look what I get back. U, D, V, B. What is this? Well, it means that in column U, the minimum value, which was 314, is in row D. And the minimum value in column V is in row B. And the minimum value in column W is also in row B, and so on and so forth. So yeah, we can totally do this. And of course, right, what if I say df.ag? of min and idx min, will this work? Yes, it will. And I get back a data frame showing me for each column, what did I get in terms of the minimum value and the minimum values uh, index? 
What if I want to turn that around though, right? What if I want to get the minimum value per row, not per column, and its column name? So one way to do this, I could of course transpose. So I could do the same thing. Well, let's just do it here. I could say df dot t dot min, and that's going to give me the minimum per row. But that's not really what I like. I, I guess I could, but instead I can say df dot min, and I can say axis equals columns, and it'll give me exactly the same thing. I just think this is a little more aesthetic. By the way, instead of columns and rows for the axes, you could say zero and one, or is it one and zero? I honestly never remember, and I just use rows and columns as strings. Um, so I could actually say then df ag of min and idx min, I can say axis equals columns. And then we're going to get for each row, what was the minimum value and in what column was it located? I use min and max all the time, obviously, but I also use idx min and idx max all the time because there's so many situations in which I'm interested in the index, especially if the index is a date time value. And I want to know the point at which I got that lowest value or the highest value. Let's load up something really quickly here. Just take a look. So I'm going to say df equals pd read csv. I'm going to load this from users, Ruven, courses, current data. WTI, there it is, WTI. I knew it was West Texas uh, um, uh, uh, oil. And if I say this from a while back, so it's not gonna be current data. And you can see here that I have a date column and I have a price. Well, I'm gonna modify how I load it. I'm gonna say here, parse dates equals uh, date. So I'm gonna make that into a date time column, not just a regular old string column. And then I'm gonna make that the index as well. So we we'll say index call equals date. And now when I look at it, we can see that we have a one column data frame in which the index is dates and times and the values are the prices. So now I can say df idx min of price. And so this means on which date was the oil price lowest in this data, uh, in this, uh, oops, sorry, price on which date was idx mean, oh, sorry about that. I just say IDX min because of the data frame. And I mean, I could, anyway, anyway. So IDX min of price was on April 20th, 2020. What is frustrating here is that I don't know the actual value and that's why I'll want to use ag. So I can say DF ag of, and then we'll say here IDX min and min. Like what was that smallest value? And the answer is that smallest value was minus $36.98 per barrel of oil. That's right in the middle of April, 2020, when the pandemic was really getting started and people were freaking out and no one was using their cars, there was actually a glut of oil and you could get paid to store oil. Uh, of course, you need an actual place to store the oil. So this is an example of where I can with real world data, I'll wanna get the min, I'll wanna get the IDX min, I wanna get them both together, and this is how I can do it. Okay, I hope this was fun and interesting. Don't forget, I really love getting your questions and comments and suggestions for additional topics to look into. So give me comments, give me feedback. Can't wait to see them. And I will be back soon with more about Python and Pandas. See you then.